Today, our Sunday school lesson is the apostles are persecuted. Find that in Acts chapter 5 as we continue looking at the disciples uh, spreading God's word after uh, the resurrection and uh, ascension of Jesus. Here's the Bible study and the portion of scripture for older kids and uh, parents that can do it with their older kids. Uh, or parents just to do to, do, to uh, do together. Acts chapter 5, verses 17 to, to 42. Answer these three questions. Try to come up with a couple different uh, thoughts for each question. Um, and then go over it together uh, if there's multiple of you. Um, come up with different answers. Uh, see what you come up with uh, as you study God's word together. I will read along. Feel free to uh, pause the video. And do however you want to study this. If you want to read, have your kids read. Um, but yes, I'll read along uh, with our story today. Now, if you recall, the last time the Jewish leaders had uh, put Peter and John into prison and warned them uh, not to tell others about Jesus. And this is where we, we pick up in the book of Acts. We begin. The Jewish leaders had warned Peter and John never to teach about Jesus again. But Peter, John, and the other apostles continued to preach boldly about Jesus, and they did miracles in his name. As a result, more and more people were brought to faith in Jesus. This made the high priest and the other Jewish leaders very angry. So one day, they arrested all the apostles and put them in prison. And you know, they'd warned them and thrown Peter and John into prison once before. And now, here we see it happen again. But that night, God sent an angel to open the doors of the prison. And the angel led the apostles out and said to them, Go and stand in the temple courtyard and tell the people about salvation through Jesus. The, uh... You see the angel on the screen there, uh, the, the one that's dressed in white in the background. The angel uh, letting them get out of prison. So early the next morning, the apostles, they went back to the temple courtyard and began teaching the people about Jesus again. But meanwhile, the Jewish leaders met to question the apostles they were thinking that the apostles were still in prison, and so they sent the temple guards to bring them out. But when the temple guards got to the prison, they could not find the apostles anywhere. They returned to the leaders and reported, We went to the prison, and we found it securely locked, and the prison guards were keeping watch outside the doors. But when we opened the doors, no one was inside. The Jewish leaders were puzzled. What could have happened? Well, of course we know what happened, right? God sent the angel to let them out. A miracle. But then someone came with the news. The men you put in prison are standing in the temple courtyard teaching the people. The guards rushed to the temple and brought the apostles back to face the leaders. The high priest said to the apostles, We gave you clear orders not to teach in Jesus' name, but you have filled the entire city of Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are trying to blame us for this man's death. Peter and the other apostles answered, We must obey God rather than human beings. You killed Jesus by nailing him to a cross. But God has raised him from the dead as the Savior of all people. We are witnesses of these things. When the leaders heard this, they were so angry that they wanted to put the apostles to death. But one of the leaders, a respected man named Gamaliel, stood up and ordered that the apostles be taken out of the room. Gamaliel said to the other leaders, Think carefully about what you plan to do to these men. In the past, other men have claimed to be leaders chosen by God 
and some people followed them, but in the end, all they did came to nothing. So I advise you to leave these men alone. Let them go. If what they are teaching is only their own idea, it will not last long. But if their teaching is from God, you will not be able to stop them anyway. You may even find yourself fighting against God. The other leaders decided to follow Gamaliel's advice. They called the apostles back in and had them beaten. Then they ordered the apostles never to speak about Jesus again. After that, they let the apostles go. The apostles went home rejoicing because they knew their suffering had been for Jesus' sake. And day after day, they continued to preach about Jesus, both in the temple courtyard and in the homes of believers. They never stopped proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Savior. A few questions. What did the Jewish leaders tell the apostles to stop doing? I told them, stop telling people about Jesus. They did not like this teaching that Jesus forgave all people from, or yeah, forgave all people of their sin. They did not like this, and they told them to stop. Stop telling people this. And what did the Jewish leaders do to the apostles? Because, of course, the apostles did not stop teaching about Jesus. So, at the start, what did the Jewish leaders do? To the apostles. They threw them into prison. The disciples weren't going to stop telling people. This was the best news of all. They couldn't help but tell people. And so the Jewish leaders threw them into prison. But what did God do for the apostles? Remember that God sent an angel to open up the prison doors for them. The, the prison guards, they didn't know what was happening. They didn't see what was happening. And so, yeah, the angel allowed them to escape. And what did the disciples do after they were released from prison? If you remember, the angel told them what to do. They went back and told more people about Jesus. They went back to the temple courtyard. You know, maybe after a couple times of being thrown into prison, you might get scared. Oh, no. They continued to tell people about Jesus. How did the Jewish leaders feel about this? They were very angry. And they were so angry that they were ready to put them to death. Now there's a man that stepped in. He was a Jewish leader. Who stepped in to speak to the Jewish leaders? Yeah, this man's name was Gamaliel. He told them to take the apostles out, and he spoke to the Jewish leaders. And what did Gamaliel say? There were a lot of things that he said, but just kind of summarize what he had to say. He basically said, uh, just kind of summarizing what he said, you know, if they are making this up, they will fail. It will not last. But if what they're saying is from God, well, you can't stop them because God is fighting for them and God is on their side. Very wise words from Gamaliel. In the end, what did the Jewish leaders do to the apostles? Well, they listened to Gamaliel and the fact that they didn't kill them, but they still had them beaten. You see that they you know, were probably bloodied and hurt, bruises, all because they were just telling people about Jesus. True or false, 
the apostles were sad after they were beaten. Yeah, false. You know, I after I was beaten, I think I I would be pretty sad, maybe angry. But the the Bible tells us that the disciples they rejoiced that they were beaten. They rejoiced that they suffered for Jesus. You know, Jesus suffered so much for us. And so the disciples, the apostles, well, this was a way that they felt like they too got to suffer in return for what Jesus had done for them. Pretty impressive faith shown by the apostles there. All right, what are some things that we learn in this account? There's a whole bunch, so try to come up with a, with a couple. All right, here are a few things. God's word will always last. The uh, Bible tells us that uh, the grass may wither and fall, but God's word will endure forever. Um, kind of like what Gamaliel said, if this is from God, it will not fail. God's word, the Bible, is always there. It will always be there for us to learn and to hear God's voice because he's always going to be uh, working uh, working faith into people's hearts to call more and more people to, to him in heaven. Just tell people about Jesus. The apostles didn't let being thrown into prison, they didn't let anything deter them. They had the best news of all, that their sins were forgiven and they were going to heaven. And they wanted everybody that they uh, could come into contact with to know this. We, we learn this from this account to tell people about Jesus. One thing we learn as Christians, we will have troubles. Um, you know, Jesus doesn't promise us that our life will always be happy and always be easy, but those troubles will not last. God will protect us and he'll get us through these. Some of the other things that we learn, we can always rejoice even during the troubles, like the apostles at the end, um, they rejoiced because they were just like Jesus suffered for us. Well, that was a chance for them to suffer for Jesus. Um, and in the end, they knew that their sins were still forgiven and they were still going to heaven. So because of that, even when troubles and stuff that we maybe don't make us happy, we can still rejoice because we have Jesus and nothing can take that away from us. No troubles can ever take that away from us. God always protects us. He protected his apostles, um, got them out of prison, watched over them even when they were being beaten. Um, and God protects us always in Jesus, our Savior, who protects us from, from sin and death. I'll listen to God always. Um, rather than being scared of human beings or humans, first and foremost, we listen to God. Um, the apostles, they weren't going to listen to these Jewish leaders because they were telling them to disobey God. And they weren't afraid of them. But they were wanting to obey and listen to God. And that's who we first and foremost always listen to. A bunch of different things, and maybe you came up with, with some others. Here are some of the thoughts I had for uh, older children, high school uh Adults doing a Bible study, here are some of the thoughts that I came up with, and I'm sure you probably came up with others. Um, seeing our sin. How about just persecution and hardship in general? That is a result of sin. We no longer live in a perfect world, and God tells us that, yes, there will be trouble. There will, will be persecution. There will be hardship in, in our lives. That's because of sin. How about you killed Jesus? You know, Peter says those words again. You killed Jesus. You had him crucified. That is a result of sin. And when we look at ourselves, my sin killed Jesus. Because of my sinfulness, Jesus had to die. How about trusting people over God? I know that's a that's one that you know we all struggle with, right? Rather than looking to um, God's word first and trusting him first. We might put our trust in the people in, in our life, um, you know, fearing them more than we fear God. 
But how's this account lead me to see my Savior? God's word always lasts. Uh, that That's amazing. Um, God's word is always going to be here, no matter how much persecution it face, uh, we face. God's word always lasts. That's God's promise. God protects us. Uh, we see that in Jesus, our Savior, most of all, um, because he ultimately protects us from sin and death. Jesus faced the ultimate persecution for us. Yeah, we'll... We will have to suffer uh, for Jesus in different ways. You know, thankfully in this country we don't get beaten for our faith, um, but you might face verbal persecution. Um, but how does this see our Savior? Because Jesus suffered most of all. Um, he suffered in my place, suffered on the cross. That allows us to see, uh, see my Savior and see what he did for me. Things to pray about. Uh, that we see in this account. Pray for others to not reject Jesus. Some of these are, are pretty similar to last week's. Um, unfortunately, we know that not all people are going to listen to Jesus. Pray for those that you know um, that don't believe in Jesus. Pray for them. How about give us the courage to speak up, to not be afraid of, of people or leaders who maybe make fun of, of Jesus or make fun of us because we believe in Jesus. Give us that courage to, to speak up, uh, to stand up for our faith and to tell others uh, about this wonderful news. Uh, thankful for the freedom to speak about Jesus. You know, like I said, we um, very likely will face verbal persecution in our life, but I'm thankful that we don't get beaten just by telling others about Jesus, like the, the disciples, the apostles were. How oh, the faith to trust during troubles. You know, sometimes our faith can get weakened when we face something that's really hard, I mean, like, well, maybe God doesn't love me or doesn't care about me. How could he let this happen to me? Pray for that faith to trust. God tells us we will have troubles in our lives. And that's because of sin. But ask God to give you that faith to trust, to look to him to guide you through those troubles. The faith to give thanks in all circumstances, this is a really hard one. Um, but the Bible says that we can give thanks in all circumstances. I think it's in the book of Thessalonians. Um, the disciples, the apostles, after they were beaten, they rejoiced. Why is that? Because no matter what we suffer, uh, nothing can separate us from the love that we are shown in Jesus, our Savior. So yes, in all things, we can still give thanks. Pretty amazing. Here's a really neat uh, memory verse from Isaiah uh, 41, verse 10. Uh, for younger kids, kindergarten through second grade, maybe take this in half. Uh, stop after I am your God. Older kids, you can take this whole verse. I know you can do it. Beautiful verse. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed or sad. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for uh, allowing us the opportunity to speak about you. Give us that courage to tell everyone we know about this good news, that you are our Savior, that you've taken away all our sin, and now give us the faith to trust you, when troubles or things get hard in our life, give us the faith to always trust you and look to you and know that you will always protect us and we have nothing to fear because you are always with us. And we know that someday we will be with you forever in heaven. Help us to trust that now and always. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for watching again, guys. Uh, I know I look forward to uh, teaching in person again, hopefully soon. Um, but for now, thanks for, for listening and studying God's word with me. Uh, always enjoy that. Parents, if you're looking for any resources, just once again, uh, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to point you to, to more resources. I pray that uh, God blesses the rest of your day.